Dear friends, this video is part two of basic skill of crusher plant. Useful to construction professional and technicians working in construction and mining machines. We will discuss about a start up and shut down procedures for the crusher plant. B. Crushing process flow and material handling. C. Safety guidelines and regulations for crusher plants. D. Monitoring crusher performance and adjustments. Now we will start presenting different topic. A. Uh, start up and shut down procedures for the crusher plant. Start up and shut down procedures for a crusher plant are critical to ensure safe and efficient operation while minimizing the risk of accidents or damage to equipment. Here's a general guide for the start up and shut down procedures for a typical crusher plant. Start up procedure. 1. Check and inspect equipment. Before starting the crusher plant, visually inspect all components for any signs of damage, wear, or leaks. Ensure that all safety guards are in place and functioning properly. 2. Check lubrication. Verify that all lubrication points are properly lubricated. This includes checking oil levels, grease fittings, and any automated lubrication systems. 3. Check electrical systems. Ensure that all electrical connections are secure and there are no exposed wires or damaged cables. Verify that emergency stop buttons and interlocks are functioning correctly. 4. Check safety devices. Test safety devices such as emergency stops, belt alignment switches, and conveyor pull cord switches to ensure they are operational. 5. Pre-start checks. Follow any specific pre-start checks recommended, recommended by the manufacturer of the crusher plant. This might include checking hydraulic pressures, clearing any material buildup, and verifying that the crusher is in a safe state to start. 6. Startup sequence. Start the equipment in the recommended sequence, typically from upstream to downstream. This might involve starting conveyors, feeders, and other components before starting the crushers. 7. Monitor operations. As the equipment starts up, Closely monitor its operations for any abnormal sounds, vibrations, or performance issues. Address any concerns promptly. 8. Gradual feed. Begin feeding the crusher gradually to ensure a smooth and controlled start. Avoid overloading the crusher. Shutdown procedure. 1. Gradual shutdown. Similar to startup, gradually reduce the feed rate to the crusher before initiating the shutdown process. This helps prevent material blockages and ensures a controlled shutdown. 2. Stop feeders and conveyors. Stop feeding material into the crusher and allow the remaining material in the system to be processed and cleared. 3. Monitor operations. During the shutdown process, closely monitor the equipment's operations for any signs of abnormalities or issues. 4. Clear material. Clear any remaining material from the crusher, feeders, and conveyors to prevent material buildup and potential blockages. 5. Idle run. Allow the crusher to run in idle mode for a short period to ensure that all remaining material is processed and to allow the equipment to cool down. 6. Shutdown sequence. Shut down the equipment in the recommended sequence, typically from downstream to upstream. This might involve stopping crushers, conveyors, and other components. 7. Turn off power. Switch off the power to the equipment and ensure that all electrical controls are in the off posi position. 8. Lockout slash tagout. If required by safety regulations, perform lockout slash tagout procedures to isolate the equipment from power sources and prevent unauthorized startup. 9. Post shutdown inspection. After shutdown, perform a thorough inspection of the equipment to ensure that it is in a safe state and ready for the next startup. It's important to note that the specific startup and shutdown procedures may vary based on the type of crusher plant and the manufacturer's recommendations. Always refer to the Equipment's Operation and Maintenance Manual for detailed instructions tailored to the specific equipment you are using. Additionally, follow any safety protocols and guidelines set by your organization to ensure the safety of personnel and equipment during startup and shutdown processes. B. Crushing process flow and material handling. 
The crushing process flow and material handling in a typical crusher plant involves several stages and various components that work together to efficiently process raw materials into the desired end products. Here's an overview of the general crushing process flow and material handling steps. 1. Material Reception and Storage 1a. Raw materials, such as rocks, ores, or aggregates, are received at the plant and stored in designated storage areas or stockpiles. 1b. Adequate stockpiling and storage help ensure a consistent supply of material for the crushing process. 2. Feeding and Conveying 2a. The raw materials are fed into the crusher plant using feeders or conveyors. 2b. Feeders regulate the flow of material into the crushers, ensuring a controlled and consistent feed rate. 2c. Conveyors transport the material between different stages of the crushing process and may also be used to stockpile the processed material. 3. Primary crushing. 3a. The material is fed into the primary crusher, crusher, example, jaw crusher, gyratory crusher, to reduce its initial size. 3b. Primary crushers break down large rocks or ores into smaller pieces, preparing them for further processing. 4. Secondary and tertiary crushing. 4a. The crushed material from the primary crusher is further processed in secondary and possibly tertiary crushers, example, cone crushers, impact crushers. 4b. Secondary and tertiary crushers reduce the material size even further to achieve the desired product specifications. 5. Screening and sizing. 5a. After crushing, the material is typically screened to separate it into different sizes or grades. 5b. Vibrating screens or other types of screening equipment classify the material based on its size, ensuring that the final products meet the required specifications. 6. Washing and classification, optional. 6a. Depending on the application, some plants may include a washing and classification process to remove impurities from the crushed material and produce specific grades of aggregates. 7. Stockpiling and storage. 7a. The screened and sized material is stockpiled in designated storage areas or bins. 7b. Proper stockpiling helps ensure a steady supply of materials for various applications and allows for efficient loading and transportation. 8. Loadout and Transportation 8a. The final products are loaded onto trucks, railcars, or other transportation vehicles for delivery to customers or further processing facilities. 8b. Material handling equipment such as loaders, conveyors, and hoppers assist in loading and transporting the products. 9. Dust Suppression and Environmental Control 9a. Throughout the crushing process, dust suppression systems may be used to minimize airborne dust particles generated by the operation. 9b. Proper environmental controls help maintain a, maintain a safe and compliant work environment. 10. Maintenance and Inspection 10a. Regular maintenance and inspections are performed on equipment to ensure optimal performance and identify potential issues before they lead to breakdowns. 11. Control Systems and Monitoring 11a. Advanced control systems and monitoring tools are used to manage the crusher plant's operations, track production, and optimize efficiency. It's important to note that the specific process flow and material handling steps can vary based on the type of crusher plant, the type of raw materials being processed, and the desired end products. Additionally, safety protocols and environmental regulations should be followed at all stages of the process to ensure the well-being of personnel and minimize the plant's impact on the environment. C. Safety Guidelines and Regulations for Crusher Plants Ensuring the safety of personnel, equipment, and the environment is of utmost importance in crusher plant operations. Adhering to safety guidelines and regulations helps prevent accidents, injuries, and environmental hazards. Here are some key safety guidelines and regulations that should be followed in crusher plants. 1. Regulatory Compliance 
Familiarize yourself with local, national, and industry-specific regulations that govern crusher plant operations, including safety, environmental, and occupational health regulations. 2. Safety Training 2A. Provide comprehensive safety training for all personnel involved in crusher plant operations, including operators, maintenance staff, and supervisors. 2B. Ensure that employees are trained on safe operating procedures, emergency response protocols, and the proper use of personal protective, protective equipment, PPE. 3. Personal protective equipment, PPE. Require the use of appropriate PPE, such as hard hats, safety glasses, ear protection, gloves, and respiratory protection, based on the specific hazards present in the plant. 4. Lockout slash tagout, LOTO. Implement proper lockout slash tagout procedures to isolate equipment from energy sources during maintenance and repair activities. This prevents accidental startup and ensures the safety of maintenance personnel. 5. Equipment Inspections and Maintenance 5a. Establish a routine maintenance and inspection schedule for all equipment in the crusher plant. 5b. Conduct regular inspections to identify and address potential safety hazards, equipment wear, and malfunctioning components. 6. Emergency Procedures 6a. Develop and communicate clear emergency procedures for situations such as equipment malfunctions, fires, electrical hazards, and chemical spills. 6b. Conduct regular drills to ensure that employees are familiar with emergency response protocols. 7. Material handling and storage. Properly handle, store, and dispose of materials to prevent accidents and environmental contamination. Follow guidelines for hazardous materials if applicable. 8. Housekeeping. 8a. Maintain a clean and organized work environment to prevent slips, trips, and falls. Keep walkways and work areas clear of debris and obstacles. 9. Traffic Management Implement proper traffic management and signage to prevent collisions and ensure the safe movement of vehicles and equipment within the plant. 10. Fall Protection Provide fall protection equipment and measures for elevated work areas, such as platforms, walkways, and elevated conveyors. 11. Confined Space Entry if the plant has confined spaces, implement proper pr procedures for confined space entry, including atmospheric testing, ventilation, and rescue plans. 12. Noise Control Implement noise control measures to protect employees from excessive noise levels. Provide hearing protection as needed. 13. Dust and Air Quality Implement dust control measures such as dust suppression systems to prevent airborne dust and maintain air quality within permissible limits. 14. Reporting and Incident Investigation Establish a process for reporting near misses, incidents, and accidents. Conduct thorough investigations to identify root causes and implement corrective actions. 15. Safety Culture Foster a strong safety culture within the organization by promoting awareness, accountability, and a commitment to safe work practices. Remember that specific safety guidelines and regulations may vary depending on the location, industry, and type of crusher plant. It's essential to collaborate with safety professionals, industry associations, and regulatory agencies to ensure that your crusher plant operations are compliant with the most up-to-date safety standards. D. Monitoring crusher performance and adjustments. Monitoring crusher performance and making necessary adjustments is crucial for maintaining optimal efficiency, productivity, and product quality in a crusher plant. Here's a general guide on how to monitor crusher performance and make adjustments as needed. 1. Regular inspections. Conduct routine visual and operational inspections of the crusher plant and its components. Look for signs of wear, damage, or abnormalities that could affect performance. 2. Production Tracking Keep detailed records of production rates, throughput, and product sizes. Compare actual performance to target goals and identify any deviations. 3. Real-time Monitoring Systems 
Utilize modern monitoring and control systems that provide real-time data on crusher operations. These systems can track variables such as power consumption, crusher cavity level, feed rate, and more. 4. Particle Size Analysis Periodically analyze the particle size distribution of the crushed material. This helps ensure that the final product meets the desired specifications and allows adjustments if needed. 5. Wear Parts Monitoring Keep track of the wear rates of crusher wear parts, such as liners, mantles, and concaves. Replace worn parts promptly to maintain consistent performance. 6. Power Consumption Analysis Monitor the power consumption of the crusher motor and other relevant components. An increase in power consumption may indicate issues like material buildup or inefficient crushing. 7. Crushing Chamber Optimization Adjust the crusher's settings, such as the closed side setting, CSS, and the eccentric throw, to optimize the crushing chamber for the desired product size and shape. 8. Material Feed Control Ensure a consistent and controlled feed rate to the crusher. Adjust the feeders and conveyor belts as needed to maintain a steady flow of material. 9. Gradation and Shape Adjustments if the final product doesn't meet the desired gradation or shape, consider adjusting the crusher settings or making changes to the crushing process. 10. Crushing Force and Pressure Depending on the crusher type, monitor the crushing force and pressure within the crusher. Adjustments to the crusher's operating parameters may be needed to optimize performance. 11. Lubrication and Cooling Ensure that lubrication systems are functioning properly and that crushers are adequately cooled to prevent overheating. 12. Vibration Analysis Monitor vibration levels in critical components of the crusher. Elevated vibration may indicate misalignment, imbalance, or other issues. 13. Continuous Improvement Regularly review crusher performance data and trends to identify opportunities for improvement. Implement changes and adjustments based on data-driven insights. 14. Operator Training Provide operators with training on how to monitor crusher performance and make basic adjustments. Empower them to recognize and address issues in real time. 15. Collaborate with experts Work with crusher manufacturers, technical support teams, and industry experts to get guidance on optimizing crusher performance and making effective adjustments. Effective monitoring and adjustments can lead to increased efficiency, reduced downtime, and improved product quality. By closely monitoring crusher performance and promptly making necessary adjustments, you can ensure that your crusher plant operates at its best and delivers consistent results. Friends. We have explained in brief about overview of the crusher plant operation procedures, crushing process flow, and safety guidelines. Also, monitoring and adjustment of crusher performance. We request all to mention your view and requirement in comment section of YouTube video also like and share to your friend. Also subscribe our YouTube channel Infra Mechanizer, this is 100% free.